for your next segment to hear about all the amazing innovations we're doing in our work management applications. Please welcome one of my favorite Atlassians, our Chief Product Officer, Joff Redfern. <laughs> Thanks, awesome job. Welcome everyone online and those in the room. How fantastic is it to be here in person again? It's crazy, right? For the past two, two years, I've been working out of a home office with three dogs and two cats as coworkers. So for those of us in the room, I'd love to take a moment to just celebrate being in person again. I want you to look at the person directly across from you. Make eye contact. You got it? This is going to be really complicated instructions, so you're going to have to listen carefully. Is everyone looking? OK, perfect. Give that person a huge smile and a little wave. Doesn't that feel great? Yeah. I know. I know. Waves. Perfect. OK, let's dive into what I want to share with you today. Anu showed you the three markets we play in sitting on top of the Atlassian platform. And you probably know what we mean when we talk about agile, DevOps, and IT service management. But I'm here to talk about work management. What does it even mean? Work management is a category of products that have received a boatload of attention over the last few years as companies of all shapes and sizes have tried to navigate the digital transformation. It's the part of our product portfolio that is focused on the one billion knowledge workers and the millions of business teams. Think beyond the software and the IT team. Think HR, finance, and a whole lot more. As you all know, there's been an explosion of apps, all trying to help teams work better. And it's working. Teams are loving it. And these apps are becoming more specific than ever before. There's an app for virtually every role in your company. Apple's iconic phrase, there's an app for that, has never been more true. But this time, it's for work and not home. In fact, Okta's business report recently showed that the average company has 89 apps and growing. And as Anu just shared, if your company is 2,000 employees or more, you have an average of 187 apps. All these purpose-built apps, they're great for helping teams get their work done, but that's introduced a new challenge. How do you get teams to work together when they're all sitting on different islands? There are a few different schools of thoughts on how to tackle this problem. There's the classic one app to rule them all. I didn't make this up. I saw this on a billboard on the way in from the airport. Yep, the old all-in-one app. Trust us, just go ahead and standardize on our product and all will be grand. Look, I love my Swiss Army knife, but it's the jack of all trades, master of none. You're not going to build your company on a Swiss Army knife. Every team in craft should be able to use the tools that are best for them. We believe there's a different way. At Atlassian, our approach is to help every team work differently together. And you're going to hear us say that a lot over the next few days. And that's because we truly believe that's the best way to help teams and organizations. Shortly, you will hear from my friend Erica, head of product for work management. And she's going to show you how your teams can work differently with tools like Confluence, Trello, and Jira work management. But first, I'm going to share with you Atlas, the new product Scott revealed earlier that we purpose built to fill a big gap in the work management market. We build Atlas to enable teamwork across teams, 
not just within teams, we build Atlas to work differently together. Here's that, that video Scott shared with a, uh, the reveal that Scott shared for the folks that are online. So let's take a quick look again. This is the Atlas teaser. So Atlas has been in private beta for a while now, and it's already helping teams at Warby Parker, Canva, and LaunchDarkly kick butt. But before I dive in and show you how it works, I want to take a step back. Analogy time. Bear with me. Hands up if you've ever kayaked. Or canoed? Okay. So, Clearly, this team needs to get on water a little bit more. And I saw a pocket of people back there. Maybe you just need to get out more, right? So for those, you remember the first time that you kayaked? It was awkward. You got the death wobbles. You're going in circles. But then soon enough, you got the hang of it. Now, remember the first time you paddled with a partner? How'd that go? Not so smoothly, right? For me, I was with my brother, and we didn't just tip it, we flipped it. The more people you give a paddle to, the harder it gets. And that's just like teams trying to work with one another. They all work a little differently. They all have their own set of apps, workflows, and rituals. And the more teams that you have, the harder it is to keep them aligned. So how do you enable teams to work differently, use the tools that let them thrive, and unleash their full potential? You equip them with a common vocabulary to give this, them a shared understanding of their work. And that common vocabulary comes from four simple questions that can be really hard to answer if you don't know who to ask or where to look. And it all starts with having a shared understanding of what are we doing and why. That's why Atlas gives every project a homepage where anyone can understand what are we doing, why are we doing it, and what does success look like. And if you need to provide additional context from another tool, no problem. Just copy and paste a link and thanks to the magic of smart links, everyone can see a rich preview of content from apps including Loom, Google Docs, Figma, Confluence, and four, more than 40 other apps all supported by smart links. So for anyone that needs that extra detail, it's right there. While Atlas helps teams write down what success looks like for their projects, it also helps them map their work to goals. For every project, Atlas can be connected to a goal, which is great for leaders like me who need that 10,000-foot view of how teams are doing against their goals without having to get into all the details of every project. With projects and goals in Atlas, everyone can stay informed from the lens that's most appropriate for them. Well, and there's no duplication of work. With teams that are aligned on what we're doing and why, they can choose to do their, their work in the apps that work best for them. With smart links, stakeholders can always access the level of detail whenever they need it, no matter where the team chooses to do their work. Whether that's in Jira work management, in Trello, or in Asana, 
basically wherever teams choose to do their work. So that's how Atlas equips teams with a common vocabulary on what they're doing and why. Now, let's see how Atlas keeps everyone informed on how's it going. Hands up if this looks familiar. Yeah, oh, I love it. The dreaded status meeting. Yes, I see people cringing in the middle here. We all know it, we all hate it. Is it my turn yet? Is anyone even listening? Are my updates even useful? We've all felt this at some point. The fact is, status meetings work great when you're small, but they simply don't scale. And most of the time, they're a complete waste of time. With Atlas, there's no more wondering, why am I even here? Because Atlas eliminates the need to meet live. It's completely asynchronous. You can write and read updates when it works best for you. Every week for projects and every month for goals, owners are reminded to post their update. No more trying to find a time that works for everyone, especially when it's not a great use of time for anyone. Atlas also stops you from wondering whether people are actually reading your updates. Just like crafting that perfect tweet, Atlas encourages more effective communication by limiting updates to only 280 characters. Project owners can focus on keeping their updates short and sweet and to the point. And for the stakeholders who are reading the updates, this makes reading updates easier and more relevant. Lastly, if you've ever owned a project, you know there's nothing more daunting than trying to answer, when will it really, really be done? That's why Atlas has fuzzy dates. Yeah, fuzzy dates. What's a fuzzy date? You know when you get on a plane and before you take off, you have a sense for when you're gonna land, but the closer that you get to your destination, the more accurate that estimated time of arrival becomes, right down to the exact second of touchdown. Lots of projects don't have dates because they're too hard to estimate at the start. But what if we allowed you to improve the accuracy of the date for the project throughout the project? At the start, you probably have a rough idea of what quarter the project will be done. As the project progresses and you get more clarity, you can be more specific. And then eventually, you're gonna hone in on that exact date that you'll finish. So instead of wasting time trying to estimate, teams can instead focus on GSD, getting shit done. And because we all know a picture is worth a thousand words, Teams can embed images, documents, videos, whatever they need to create a useful and engaging update. To ensure these updates reach the right stakeholders every week for projects and every month for goals, Atlas sends followers a personalized digest, an email, Slack, Microsoft Teams, or any time you visit Atlas Feed, where you see the updates for projects and goals that you chose to follow. With Atlas, you're gonna get all of the signal with none of the noise. Atlas is gonna drive alignment across teams in your company, but don't take my word for it. Look at the smile on Jonathan's face. And the quote from our friends over at Launch Darkly, with Atlas, you can kiss the status meaning goodbye. So now we know what we're doing and why and how it's going, it's time to focus on what's the core of work. People. 
your company's biggest asset. I want to ask each of you a question. What team are you on? Think about that. What team are you on? There's probably several ways you can answer that question. Traditional employee directories try to answer it by giving you this tops-down view of how your company is structured. And that's great if you want to know where someone sits in your org. Help, you know, that's helpful. But it doesn't give you a complete picture. It doesn't reflect the reality of how your company actually works together and what people are actually working on, which looks more like this. Across your company, cross-functional teams are being formed all the time. And sure, it's helpful to see someone who someone reports to, but it's as important to see what teams they belong to and what they're working on. Atlas gives you the complete picture so you know who's working on what. For starters, every project in Goal can quickly show you who owns this thing. And you can see the team that's working on it. Since teams are updating the projects every week, this is the most accurate and up-to-date representation of who's working on this thing. Every individual teammate has their own profile with a live view of what they're currently working on and what they've achieved. It also gives you that tops-down view of who they are, what they do, and how they fit into your company. Atlas syncs with popular identity providers like Okta, so you can trust it's always in sync with your source of truth. You also get this bottoms-up view of self-managed teams that individuals are a member of. And each of these teams have their own profile, too. Built on the Atlassian pro profile, team profiles provide a view of who's on the team, what they're currently working on, and the skills and interests based on the topics the team's projects and goals are associated with. We've also added topics to help you when you don't know who to ask. Well, I love topics. With topics in Atlas, I can see all the updates associated with that topic, all of the projects and goals associated with that topic, and all of the knowledge my coworkers have tagged with that topic. So I can learn without knowing who to ask, and I don't lose speed. I bet your employee directory can't do that. In fact, I know he can't. And lastly, we're embedding the universal profiles I showed you earlier inside Atlassian products. And we're going to start by putting them in Jira and Confluence Cloud. So whether you're seeking more context on who owns that Jira issue or mentioning a teammate in Confluence, Atlas connects the dots across them all. That, my friends, is Atlas, where teams get the context they need to stay aligned and get more done. No more teams wobbling around in kayaks. It's all smooth sailing from here. You can start using Atlas today for free. Yes, free. People, there's nothing better than free for your entire company. And we're excited to see how Atlas transforms your company. Visit atlas.com slash atlas, or find my mates, Sean and Sharif, at the Point A booth and learn more. Next up is my friend and colleague, Erica. She heads up Product for Work Management Group and will give you the latest updates on Confluence, Trello, and Jira Work Management. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Hello. I'm so excited to be here and to see all you in person and those of you online. Uh, welcome. 
Atlas is super exciting. It is just the beginning, though, of how we're helping teams work differently together. This new, more open, more connected, more self-organized way of working is already in full swing with our customers. I know this because team-managed projects have taken off in JIRA work management as teams are self-organizing. We've seen Trello deployed at some of the largest companies as more open and flexible ways of working are emerging. And since 2020, Confluence page creation has spiked 40% as teams are figuring out how to communicate in this new hybrid era. Work today is so different. I know I don't have to tell any of you that. Early on in the pandemic, we were watching, evaluating, trying to anticipate what our needs would be today. And so we completely redesigned Confluence Cloud's roadmap to try to meet those needs and support this new way of working. And so in this section, I am really excited to share those updates with you today. It has been so inspiring over the last couple of years to see how our customers have used Confluence. Blend is a cloud banking provider that used to have really heavy email culture, you know, just those threaded emails that make it really tough to follow what's going on. Well, now, all those hard-to-follow email threads have moved to Confluence, where people can collaborate in a single, open, centralized space together. Capgemini, a global consulting company, used to have these weekly calls that would force everyone from around the world into the same meeting. Now, they create Confluence pages where on and offshore teams can align asynchronously rather than fighting to try to stay awake at odd hours in meetings all over the world. So companies are evolving. And of course, uh, one of the biggest changes and maybe most unexpected trends to emerge has been this great resignation, this great job reshuffling. I am actually one of the 33 million people who's changed jobs since 2021. And I'm one of more than 3,100 new remote Atlassian hires who onboarded during the pandemic. And I have to tell you, I was terrified. I was so scared to do, you know, onboard to this big, new, important job fully remotely. But Confluence helped me. To help me ramp as a member of a very distributed team, Joff, who is my boss, used one of Confluence's onboarding templates to create this very detailed 90-day plan with links to all the information I needed, team members I should meet, success metrics, so I would know how not to get fired. It was very helpful. Thank you, Joff. Next, I created a blog post to introduce myself to all of those people I wouldn't have a chance to meet in person for a while, which described my somewhat winding career journey uh, getting to Atlassian, including my love for endangered Hawaiian birds. That there is a picture of a Hawaiian goose who chased me down and beat me with his wings when I got too close to his nest. I lost my walkie-talkie, and I had to come back with reinforcements to reclaim it, so don't mess with Hawaiian geese. I speak from experience. But one of the updates I found most valuable is the home experience, because it is sort of like the new office. From home, I can quickly create a new page, I can draft, pick up my draft work that I started yesterday, and I can stay connected to the activity that's happening across the org. So it blends a little bit of the old corporate office break room, plus maybe a little bit of the cubicle pod with just a dash of the town hall meeting happening in the lobby. It creates connection and community. And for me, who lives in the mountains in Colorado, that was really important. The new following feed shows work from the people I collaborate with most or those I choose to follow. So I follow Mike and Scott, who, if you don't know, live on a different continent than I do. So it gives me a little window into what they're thinking about and what they're working on. The popular activity feed highlights the most trafficked and commented on pages, so it makes it really easy to see what is the company buzz buzzing about and join in on the conversation. All of these made a huge difference in my ability to get up to speed fast on not just the work, but also the culture of Atlassian. And I can tell you, distributed hires need and benefit from this kind of connection. So Confluence has always been the go-to place for knowledge and collaboration for your entire company, but it is also now a personal space to think, 
create, ideate before you're ready to share your work. We gave every Confluence user a personal space because we all know there's times you have to keep that page private and not in the company-wide activity feed. So this is where I start pages that either need to stay private or where they're half-baked ideas and I want to workshop them a little bit with my close collaborators before I share more broadly. Speaking of collaboration, it's not just about text on a page anymore. Pages have come alive with visual collaboration capabilities. We added the ability to embed video files through smart links. So you simply grab a URL from YouTube or Loom, and then you can play that video back right on the page. This one is Loom. I love Loom. Loom lets you demonstrate stuff on your computer, recording yourself walking through things so you can uh, provide context and share that information with people. When I get one of these pages with a Loom video, I love it because I can watch it when I want. I can watch it at one and a half speed, which is super efficient. And I have to say, I think it has saved me from the wall-to-wall -wall Zoom meetings, and it's made working with Australians so much easier. I absolutely love it. Some ideas are best communicated with visual representations. So we've made it possible to include third-party tools like Miro and Mural, and marketplace vendors like Draw.io, Gliffy, and Lucid to bring visuals, diagrams, and flowcharts into your Confluence pages. And we've also made it easy to turn raw data into compelling visuals. Anu showed you this. We're excited about it. I'm going to show you again. With our new table visualization coming soon, you can convert that data into an interactive and customizable bar, line, or pie chart to create more meaningful stories and visual insights for your team. So we're going to add that table right into the page. And it's really beautiful and clear. OK. With pages that are so darn good looking, there's really no reason to transfer that information into a PowerPoint deck, especially since we're launching presenter mode rolling out very soon. Presenter mode is a streamlined view of a published page that makes for a really polished screen share. So this page looks good, but there's still that distracting page tree over on the left. There's the navigation bar. I've got a gazillion tabs open at the top. Presenter mode strips all that out. With presenter mode, your source of truth becomes the interactive presentation medium. And at Atlassian, the result is we really don't use slides anymore. We just use Confluence. So here's what we do at Confluence. When we're presenting in a meeting, a presenter will share a page to the, to the meeting, set some context. And then when it's time to get into the content, everyone turns their videos off so they can read, and they start commenting on the page in real time. This is great because it allows the presenter to understand, ooh, where's the debate? What are the interesting topics? And helps them curate the discussion. It also means that everyone gets a voice, not just those who are most vocal on Zoom. So when everyone's done, they turn their videos back on, and the conversation continues. And best of all, you have all of that feedback recorded as part of the record in one place. So the visualizations that we showed you and presenter mode are really about conveying deep, complex meaning. But we are also building features that are purely playful. So you can add emojis to page titles and header images. And coming soon, your readers will be able to tell you how they feel with reactions like hearts or maybe something that looks a little like that Hawaiian goose who chased me. Unless you think these features are purely frivolous, Pages with emojis in titles and header images get 10 to 12 times more engagement. OK, that sounds like complete and total marketing jargon. What does that even mean? It means playful features like these bring a bit more humanity into work, and people respond. Pages that have emojis are more read, commented on, people understand them, knowledge is shared, work moves forward. And honestly, after the last two years we've all had, I think we all want a little bit more of that connection. OK, but you know what we don't want more of is <laughs> all of those constant, repetitive questions that we get over and over and over. The ones that come to mind for me are, hey, where's that new monthly report? Uh, could you remind me tomorrow? Or could you do me a favor and share this with the whole team? And I know that every single one of the 75,000 Confluence customers we have has similar work that should be automated. And that's why we're introducing automation for Confluence 
in our premium edition, which is available through the, through the early access program. So you can automate those questions before they even ask. Confluence will build those monthly report pages, set those reminders, and share those pages for you with simple if-then rules. Next up, we have one more thing I'm really excited to share because this is the first time we're talking about it publicly. Earlier, Joff showed you an example of an embedded Confluence page in Atlas where you could view, create, or edit right in context. That's not, that's not the end of it. We are not finished. Our vision for Confluence is to be anywhere you want it to be, which is why we're really excited to announce a big step forward in our partnership with Microsoft. Microsoft Teams will be the first non-Atlassian product to integrate Confluence embedded pages. Partnerships like this are the future of open and connected work management tools. And we're working with, part with other partners to embed those pages into their products as well. So let's take a look. With our updated integration, Coming very soon, you can view, edit, and create those pages without ever leaving Microsoft. So imagine you're chatting with a teammate about an upcoming project. With the new integration, you can discuss that project in Teams and in real time designate a space, create a Confluence page, and collaborate all within Teams. So this helps you get started on your work where you are during a conversation, not after, so you can spend more time working and less time planning to work. Before we move on, quick reminder that all of these features are available or coming soon to Confluence Cloud and ready for enterprise. If you want to learn more about the differences between cloud and server or data center, you can check out our Atlassian Migration Center or booth to learn more. Confluence is the collaboration space that's shared with your whole company. But to truly support teams that need to work differently together, you have to have options. Some work needs the power and structure of JIRA work management. Some work needs the open and flexible collaboration of Trello. There really is no one-size-fits-all approach to managing work. So that's why we give teams choice. And in this last section of today's keynote, we're going to look at what's new for Trello and JIRA work management for business teams, starting with Trello, which is the most loved tool for managing work with over 95 million signups and users in 80% of Fortune 500s. Big companies like Visa, John Deere, eBay, and Coinbase are using Trello because it helps everyone work together in a tool they love using. We actually used it to coordinate this very presentation so I could stand here on this stage with you. Product, marketing, events, design, all work together. So let me show you what we did there. It was really easy. To start, we outlined the key tasks and milestones, and then we gave each of those a due date. To track those deadlines and dates against, you know, today, you can flip to the calendar view. I call this the actually get shit done calendar because it helps me view the work I've actually committed to delivering and not just that never ending stack of meetings I'm supposed to attend. So, okay, let's say legal needed another week to validate my claim that Trello is a million times faster than competitors. No problem, you just drag and drop the work, it's reflected on the board, and the deadline is updated. Best of all, everyone can see the changes and adapt accordingly. Pains me to say I was not cleared to say Trello is a million times faster than competitors, but I was cleared to say it is the most loved tool for managing work according to G2. I've said it a few times before, and I'm gonna say it a few more. Trello is so simple to use that a lot of people use it for their own personal work management. I do. I start my day by checking Erica's to-do board where I've got tasks that I'm working on. For your work, you can simply set up the board by task. Every card gets a due date. And then I have a tracking column over on the right. In my tracking column, I'm tracking work that's happening in other tools from Trello with smart links. So you simply paste a URL into the card. And then with previews, you can easily check in on that work without leaving Trello. So you can see I've got a JIRA issue. I can preview that product usage document in Drive or that design workshop in Figma or check out the keynote outline in Confluence. Every morning, I get a river of emails that just rushes by me. So I check and I find the most important emails and I add them to a board with a deadline so I don't lose track of what's most important amongst all that noise in my inbox. 
I do the same thing with Slack messages. When I have one that requires work from me, I turn it into a card with a, with a simple click and see the progress. For recurring tasks, I'm using the card repeater. So that means every Monday, all the tasks I know I'm going to have to do every week, check in on the, bus the weekly business metrics, the CSAT, clear out all of the expense reports I have to approve, all of those are loaded up for me and ready to go. Trello just brings a beautiful, lightweight structure to the endless stream of tasks that need, need my attention. And I find it so satisfying to move those cards into the done column. Now, when I say Trello works great for, your, for you and your closest teams, don't be fooled into thinking it's not also powerful at scale. So let me explain. US Space Force, comprised of about 6,500 military personnel, set out to create a new type of government agency, one that would be agile, modern, and deliver great staff experiences. So they started with employee onboarding. After beta testing a whole bunch of products, the team at Space Systems Command chose Trello because it's FedRAMP authorized, and new employees could use it immediately with zero training, which really helps boost engagement and morale for new hires quickly. Not only was Trello a really great employee experience, it was more efficient. It became the single repository where new hires and the staff working to bring them on board could collaborate together. So what might have been you know, a stuffy old government process was instead a modern and engaging first experience for new hires. Trello is the enterprise tool teams actually love using. Whether those teams are part of US Space Force, UNICEF coordinating teams around the world, or Bloomberg covering the news. Individual team members can design how they want to manage their own work and the work with their closest teams. Over 2 million teams around the world use Trello to track their daily to-dos and projects in 80% of Fortune 500s. Trello is, told you I'd say it, number one in customer satisfaction for the entire industry and with IT. And teams report they're 40% more productive when they use it. OK, we've just seen how Trello supports fluid and flexible work management. But what about teams that work differently, teams that need to enforce a structure and process for their workflows? So think sales enablement projects, recurring webinars, legal approval, HR onboarding, financial budgeting. For that kind of work, you need more structure. You need a workflow your team adheres to. You'll want the power of JIRA work management. Now, I know when most people hear the word JIRA, they think bug tracking, they think sprints, releases, epics, they think software development teams. And with so many companies whose engineers use JIRA software every day, of course, that makes sense. But last year, we introduced a new product in the JIRA family, reimagined from the ground up for business teams. On its own, JIRA work management is a friendly and intuitive solution for business teams to plan, track, and manage their work in one place. And most of us, who aren't developers, don't work like developers do. That's why JIRA work management introduced a number of new views tailored for business teams, like lists, calendars, timelines, and boards. So let's pick an example, show you how all of this works. How about a marketing team working on an email campaign? If you're in marketing, you've probably got a long list of email campaigns on your roadmap that, if you're not careful, can quickly turn into chaos. You've got to track the content that's being developed. You've got to get your lists ready, go through build and QA. There's multiple teams involved. A breakdown in any one of these steps means that emails are delayed or they go to the wrong list, and everybody's frustrated. Here's how Jira work management makes your life easier as a member of an email team. We'll start by looking at the list view which is our modern take on a spreadsheet. So here, I can see all the upcoming email campaigns at a glance, and I can quickly create, edit, and add details about tasks in line without needing to open up those items one by one. OK, so now I can see what I'm up against from a workload perspective, but I may want to organize my tasks by urgency. In fact, of course I do. Got to focus on what's most important. So I'm going to make sure everything has the right priority assigned. And then I'm going to group them so that I can really focus on that high priority work. All right, I've got that group there. Let's expand that first campaign and see how our deliverables are coming along from other teams. 
When I open that up, I can see there's a bunch of fields that are still empty. We, we're missing due dates. We don't have assignees for everything. A bunch of work isn't started. This is pretty important, and I want to get the team on it. No problem. Jira work management makes it really easy to invite people from different teams to that project by simply hitting the invite button, adding their names, and giving them a role. So now I can see that they're online. Yay, good, shining faces up there at the top. But not only that, I can see that they're updating tasks in real time through multiplayer mode. With multiplayer mode, we've taken another leap in making Jira a place where work happens. Multiplayer mode changes the way distributed teams like ours collaborate, improving visibility and helping us tackle that work in real time. It's also perfect for remote team meetings because we can just get in there and jam on the work together. So now I don't have to ask who's going to add that or who made this change or keep hitting refresh to see if new tasks have been added. We can see those changes happening in real time. And speaking of collaboration, not only can I work with different business teams on this project, but I can collaborate directly with engineering teams who are in Jira software. Since Jira work management was built on the same foundation as Jira software, it uniquely bridges engineering and business teams. That's why Dropbox recently brought Jira work management to their company, to put their business and engineering teams together in the same collaborative space. And through automation, they can make sure status changes in Jira work management are reflected to teams in Jira software, making work less work for everyone. I almost forgot to mention, Jira work management is free for any user with a Jira software license. So if your teams already use Jira software, you can create a business project right now and start using Jira work management today. This is our vision for the future of work. I'm a new employee in the mountains in Colorado. Joff is on a farm in Southern California. And our founders are in Sydney. This is how we work differently together. Thank you. <laughs>